something out of the ordinary. Somebody here mentioned that they have a people have two hemispheres and learn something about it. Now, this has been discovered in the last few years. But the kind of thing we're going to do now, we have done by doing that in 1951. I have recordings of that. And there, you would see that there's a question of having two hemispheres. And actually using that long before anybody published anything about it. Now, would you please lie in your stomach? I as you as you as comfortably as you can manage. Don't imitate anybody because some people will lie in that position comfortably and you in another one change, see which arm, what arm, how to lie. Then you see bend your right knee. That's right. And so that the foot is, the leg is turned to the ceiling. And first of all, flex and extend that foot many times. Slowly at the beginning. Can you hear many cracking, creaking noises you hear? That's right. That's like tendon clicking. And now gradually decrease the amplitude so that the foot is neither extended nor flexed. Decrease the amplitude until you find a point where it's neither extended nor flexed. Now, slowly, flex the foot even once again. Flex it. Now, you note know that when you flex the foot like that, your heel rises higher than before. So, in fact, that same movement can be, can be done not by flexing the foot, but by thinking of rising or raising the heel higher. Put your heel higher and lower your heel. Move the heel up and down. Means raise the heel so that the foot is flexed. And then raise the heel so that the foot is flexed. And then lower the heel so that the foot is extended. But don't extend and push to the limit because you'll do so many movements that if you do to the limit, you'll have cramps and pains and all sorts of things. Do simple, reasonable movements. Now, move the heel up and down and see whether while you move the heel up and down, you can locate where does the foot go when you raise the heel. It means look at it from a special point of your space. When you see the heel is up, where is the foot, the toes? And when the heel is down, where is the foot, where are the toes? So you can think of it, when this is raised, the other one is lowered, when the heel is up, the foot is down. When the heel is down, the foot is up. So it's a question of semantics. You're doing the same movement when I'm talking about flexing and extending the foot. Can you see? You flex and extend the foot. When you do that, the heel goes up and down, whether you want it or not. And therefore, when I say move the heel, the foot is flexed, 
and extend it whether you want it or not. Therefore, can you feel the foot and the heel and locate them in space at the same time? Means follow with your attention that when the heel is up, the toes are down, and the other way around. The other way around. When they I usually don't say what's the other way around in order not to mix up people who are already mixed up. So the heel down, the toes up and the other way around. The toes down, the heel is up and the other way around. Now, stop a second and only flex and extend the foot. Flex and extend the foot. And see whether while flexing and extending the foot, you can locate the heel in space. It means when you flex the foot, can you feel where the heel goes? And conceive, perceive, attend to both of them simultaneously. And therefore you change from one to the other until you can think, see, feel, sense the two things together simultaneously. It's not so easy, but it happens. It's not so easy, but it's not so difficult either. Stop it, lower your leg, and see how many of you had the head turned to the right while doing that. And how many had it turned to the left? Will you please all turn to the other side, whatever your head is, turn to the other side. And bend your right knee. So those who have turned away from the foot now will realize how silly the others were before. And But I'm not saying what is right, so you don't know who is silly. You will find out whether it makes a difference where the head is, when the right leg is lifted, which, hair, which side it should be, and how the hand should lie. We'll change that too. Now, would you please, again, flex the foot and extend it and diminish, decrease the amplitude slowly until you get to the middle. to the neutral point. And now, move the foot so that the big toe goes inward. Inward. Oh, 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 wait a minute. If you do, you will see that most of you will do any other movement except the one I'm asking. Now the idea is do as gently, slowly, move the foot inwards only. No, up to, nobody has done it yet. You've done, everybody has done anything you want except what I asked. Now, can you mean you know what pronation is? Well, that's why I don't use names like that. Move the foot inwards. Move the foot, but not the foot, not the leg. That means the heel goes outwards. If the foot goes inwards, the heel goes outwards. Now, 
Right. No, as you see, there is nobody who has done it yet. Ah, one person does it. That's it. There is one person who does it. I would like to know. That's a genius tale, does it? Who is it? Because it, it, most people are very, very inept to do it. There is one person who does it beautifully, as well as you will do it at the end of the lesson. But I won't show it to you, because if you imitate, you won't be able to imitate anyway. So better get up, stand up. Stand on your feet. Go to the wall. Anywhere the wall or, or anything that is solid to lean on. You can do it on my forehead, it's solid. <laughs> anywhere, the piano, anything you want. Just turn your face to the wall and hold on with both hands. And then the right foot, can you see the right foot? You can stand on the left leg, can't you? You take the, left, the right foot and move the foot so that the heel goes in outward and the foot inward, means both that side. And therefore you nearly touch the floor. And then you will see that there is rarely a person who can't do that. Do it several times. Uh, you don't realize. Now, don't move the heel. Move only the, the toes and the forward part of the foot inwards. And stand on your heel. Can you do that? Inwards and back to the middle. Inwards and back to the middle. No difficulty. Now, stand on the toes and move the heel in outward and back again. Outward and back again. Now move the whole foot so that you do those two movements together. That's right. You can see everybody can do that. There's no question. Now can you remember, now try to do what you did when I asked you to do that. What did you do with the foot? Do you remember? There was only one person who did what we are doing now. All the others did something else. And that one person is in white trousers, is a girl with hair, and there's a blue jumper. Oh, you, will you tell, let me see, where did, when did you do it? Were you in my course before? No. Are you a dancer? No. What are you? What do you do with yourself? No. You're a teacher. In what? Physical education. Well, that's very good. You were the only one who did the movement. Well, so now, would you please lie on your back again where you were? You see what happens with people? They can do it, provided it is in the position in which they do it without thinking, without knowing what they're doing. Therefore, they behave like a, an old machine, a rotten machine, or like a second-rate animal, not like a human being. Now, yet when they have their intelligence, they want to do it, they let do anything they don't know anymore. Would you lie in your stomach now? And as you know, bend your right knee, and now move that right foot as you did while standing. No, no, don't move the knee, don't move the leg right and left. Oi, the leg stands where it was. You, you don't have to move the, the leg. No, no, there should be no movement of the leg. The leg stands as before, slowly. Go, no, still, some can't do it. Slowly, it's very difficult. It's not that you, uh, 
if you saw what's being done, you wouldn't believe that they just a minute ago they could do it. But some have learned something, at least I can see some legs show intelligence. Other legs are as silly as they were. No. Slowly. You're doing uh, another 15 movements on top of the one we're asking. The one we were asking is also there, but you have another 15 with it. You see, you're flexing the foot and you're flexing. You're doing all sorts of things with that foot, slowly. Only right and left. So you move, now, move the heel outwards and inwards. The foot remaining flat as well standing. And what about the toes when you stand like that? Are the toes flexed or extended? Surely they were neither flexed nor extended. Why do you do something with them now? Are you aware that you're doing it? Move the toes inward and outward. Now move the heel inward and outward. Slowly, just pay attention, realize that when the heel is outwards, the heel goes to the right, the, so the toes and the foot itself go inwards, left. Slowly. Now move the heel outwards, means to your right. And then move it back to its place. And again, outward. You see, with many people outward, it doesn't move at all. Move it inward. You see, that moves a lot. But surely it should move from the neutral point approximately the same amount. Slowly. Move the heel inward. And again to normal, not neutral. And do it inward three, four times. But watch the foot remaining, the rest of the foot not doing any queer sort of things. Uh. Now move the heel outward from the middle. Outward, doesn't matter how much, but move it outward. Uh, other people, they whack over the foot, but the heel doesn't move a, a tenth of an inch, a hundredth of an inch. They whack on the whole foot. The heel. Doesn't matter how small the movement. Right. Stop that. Uh, really, if you have succeeded in learning to feel their foot, to make it do what they want. But if you don't know what you're doing, you can't do what you want. And as those who whack the foot do anything with it that happens to be done, they will, of course, they can't do it because they don't know what they're doing. If you know what you're doing, you can do what you want, not otherwise. Now, would you please all sit up, except you there, here, sit here, you stay, you stay. Now, bend your right leg, now watch, heel inward. Now, you, you did it better than before, you, you are apprehensive as if I am going to examine you or something. You are not on the stage now, so you can do it wrongly, it doesn't matter, but do it like you did before. 
a tiny movement but in the right direction. Now the heel inward and outward. Do it outward. Ah, can you see? Now he wackles the foot instead of two. Before he did it perfectly well, but now he is a, he is a dancer, therefore he feels he's performing. And therefore he must have anxiety, and therefore he must muck it up. <laughs> you see, while uh, in my way of thinking, when I have to do something in public the first time, I do it the best I can do. Afterwards I may fail. At home when I want to do it, I can't do it as well. But when I'm in public, I do it much better. For instance, when I want to get up here, I get up more or less well. At home, I get up like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, move the foot inwards. The foot and outwards. And outwards. That, as it goes, as it does small movement, that's as good as you can wish in the stages which we are. At the end of the lesson, you will do much better. But now you want to see what other people do. Then let's, by chance, there, you, you please, you lie down and do it, and anybody else who, uh, who I didn't see well, anybody lies, look at it. You try, bend your knee. Don't look at it. No. Move your move the move your foot inward and outward. Look what she does. She stands on a small toe. Look, that's not moving neither inward nor outward, it's just doing some other movement altogether. Look. Now, can you move the heel only inward? Nothing else. That's better. Now, but look. Only the, that's good. But can you feel that you flex also your toes? If you can flex, if you can feel that, don't look at it, just do it. Turn your heel inwards, and now outwards. Now you see, instead of turning the heel outwards, she flexed the foot and extended it. Something different. So that's actually what people do. And that's why they sprain their ankles and blame somebody on it. But in fact, they don't know what they're doing, and therefore, when quickly they have to change orientation, when they want to go to the right and then run to the left in tennis or in something like that, the, the foot does something they don't know what they're doing. And therefore, once they change the position, they're not aware at all, and think sprains, because they're trying to do two contradictory things with the same foot. That's why so many people have their ankles. Spring, the very few people who never sprain their ankle. They go and then step like that, purple. and then for a fortnight it's blue and they can't step on it. Some tear their ligaments there, and they have it for a lifetime to worry about after that. All right, now would you please stand up again, stand up again, and go again and hold on to something solid, and check again that you can actually do it, that you can move it. It's not a question that your bones are not right or the muscles are not right. Anything that is wrong with you is the brain. The ma <laughs> it's the way you, you, you treat yourself, the way you order yourself about. That's not so good. So move the foot, move the heel first inward and outward. It's quite easy, isn't it? Now, and then move the foot inward and outward. And then you will see that it is the same thing. When the foot is inward, the heel is outward. And that, by the way, at the end, when you differentiate that foot, you will see that there is, there is actually a possibility of moving the heel without the foot and the foot without the heel. Each one separate. It's possible. You will see it on the skeleton that is there, that the heel can move. All right. Now try it several times until you are sure that you know what you want to do.
Can you see there's no difficulty at all? None whatsoever. And make sure that you can move the foot without the heel. The heel without the foot means the foot remains practically in the same place and the heel moves right and left. And then you can move both if you want to. That's right. When you move both, it's as if the foot was stuck on an axe, or an axis in the middle, on the, on the top of the arc of the foot, and then you turn around this. It means you turn around the foot, actually, around the leg. Now, would you please lie down on the floor and see how come that the thing you can do becomes so difficult when you lie in a different position. By the way, we are all like that. Don't think that you're peculiar. Now, would you please turn your head again in the opposite direction, whatever you do, until you will find if the leg works properly, there is a, a predilected, a better position for the head. One of them is better than the other. But if you can't distinguish small differences, it makes no difference to you. smallest movement, but the one you want, not the one that happens. Well, there are not a few I've learned, but with some it's really something, quite a different movement. Don't look at it. If you look at it, uh, everybody looking at it will do it better. The question is, you don't look at your heels when you walk, when you ride, when you play tennis, or when you play ping pong, or when you play baseball. Can you look at your heel? Of course you can't. Or while you throw a discus or a javelin, you can't look at your heel. Therefore, you have to sense it. Sense it. And, and and do the right thing with it, not look at it. If we will look at it in the end just to see that when we check with our eyes, it's easier. It means it's not much easier to do, but you know at least why somebody is dissatisfied with your performance. Now, Stop it and sit up and have a look. Except you, please. You continue doing what you did. Now, you look. It's moving. And she does it now better than a minute ago. But can you see what she does? If, stop it. Now look, we did that. We want to do the, with the foot what we do with the hand now. Look, we want to move. That's the foot, move the foot forward, move the foot right and back, right and left, right and left, or inward and outward, inward and outward. Now you can stop that and move the 
the heel, inward and out, of inward and out. Then you can move both and do that. That's easy. And that's what you did with the foot, isn't it? But that is certainly not inward. That is not inward, isn't it? Now, in order to be able to make that, you must tell the difference between that and this. Now, if you haven't done the other one, maybe that's the problem. But you can see that you can do the movement. You see it at the wall, can't you? Now, stand up again. Near the wall. Hold on. And, and this time, this time, you lift the inside of the foot, the instep, so that you stand on the outside of the foot. That's right. On the small toe and the outer border of your foot. And then back again. Uh, do this. Only the outer border and to the middle. The outer border and to the middle. The outer border and to the middle. You outer border and to the middle with the right foot. You can see a few people, except those who have some real trouble with the, with the muscles of the leg or had a broken something in their leg, may have trouble, but otherwise everybody can do that. You stand on the outward border, outer border, and back again. Now, will you please lie on the floor? Take your left, your left arm, lie on the knuckles, back, along your body, the left one. And the right one, put in front, lying there, and turn your head to the right, that's right. And then move the hand to put the head on that hand. That's right. Now will you please lie on the floor. And now would you please lie what what after a few, many lessons you would. Take your left, your left arm, lie on the knuckles, back, along your body, the left one. And the right one, put in front, lying there, and turn your head to the right, that's right. And then move the hand to put the head on that hand, that's right. And now bend the right leg only, not both. Okay. And now move the stand on the outer border of the foot. Of the foot. Stand on the outer border of the foot. And do that again and again. Outer border of the foot. Out of border, but the foot must be neither flexed nor extended. When it's extended, you can't do it, even if you want to. If the foot is too extended, it will never do it. Just like near the wall, you didn't extend the foot, you didn't stand on tiptoe, did you? Why should you stand on tiptoe now? Well, there's nothing to stand on. Now slowly, stand on the outside border of the foot and bring it back to neutral. Outside border of the foot and back. Outside border of the foot. Outside border of the foot. And 
and slowly make that movement two, three times as if it were nothing, as if you were doing that all your life. So no power, no strength at all, just pa pa. That's do it simply. But when you stand on the outside board on the foot, what do the toes do? Huh? Would you please stand up again, touch the floor, the wall or whatever solid thing you have? Now watch, when you stand on the outer border, does anybody lift the toes first? Do you lift the toes or do the toes go down? Now try to lift the toes first, lift them, and then move to the side. That's not the thing you have been doing now. Now, therefore the toes, the toes are not flexed, but they are not lifted to your face when you turn, when you stand on the outside border. The outside border, you don't lift the, the toes of the floor. Nobody does. Now, if that is so, why well, lie down on the floor and see how many of you were lifting the toes and mistaken that for tilting the foot. Now, lie on the floor. Again, left arm alongside the body, head to the right, bend. You, the right hand you can put wherever you like, actually. If you don't want it underneath the head, put it somewhere where you feel it more comfortable. And bend your, your leg, your right foot, right leg, right knee. And then again, stand on the outside border and see what you do with your toes. Whether you do the same thing as well standing. Now, would you stop a second? Just uh, that's for curiosity's sake, to show you how to see how an intelligent brain works and find that this is a thing that was not differentiated from childhood. You see, it was left unattended, and therefore the, the foot grew in Egypt. You can only stand in a shoe and produce suffering, and when you take it out of the shoe, you put it under the blankets so not to see that ugly thing. <laughs> Isn't it? That's what most generations did. Nowadays there are already young children who have not, not been tortured with shoes as others and they have feet that they needn't put beneath the blanket. You can show them. Now look, that gentleman there with the white socks, you there. Could you please bend your right leg and see what happens when he wants to stand on the outside border. Look at it. Look. On the outside border. Look. Can you see that shows you he actually directs his brain correctly, but there is no passage, no differentiation. Therefore, he can't do better than what he does. Can you see it? He, he attempts it. He does it. It attempts it. Therefore, you will get there, provided he gets easier in his mind and doesn't care whether he succeeds or not. Don't, don't bother whether you succeed or not. Make a smaller movement. That's it. Make it even smaller. That's it. That's nice. Can you see he stopped doing 15 things? And in a few minutes, you will see that he will do it clearly. Now, slower, less work, and decide that it doesn't really matter whether you do it or not. That you don't care. But you will attempt to it that you will do it. But he, you have plenty of time. Now, that's wonderful. 
the, the, uh, uh, slowly, take, you're holding your breath when he does this. Breathe freely. That's it. That's it. Excellent. Can you see that a human brain can achieve that in a few seconds, provided he gives himself a chance? If he tries to do it as hard as he can, it wobbles. He does everything because he expresses his ambition and not his skill. What we want is to improve the skill so that you don't need ambition, so you can do it. That's all. And, and also uh, get rid of the idea that you need the uh, willpower. You need willpower only when you feel that you are impotent, that you can't do it. You, haven't got the, you can't do it. Then you need willpower to force yourself to do it. But if you can do it, what willpower do you need to scratch your nose like that? In fact, you have to be told not to do it. You don't need willpower for the thing you can do. But it, it, because it, it must also be the differential, we have will and intentional ability. We can intend to do, and willpower is forcing oneself to do. You see, that's two different things. But the, most people don't distinguish. They think willpower is always a good thing. Uh, strong willpower. But you find actually when you look at the people at strong willpower, none of them like, you like any of those. I'll give you some of them. Hitler, Mussolini, Charles XII of Sweden, Napoleon. All the strong willpower people are there and perfect to destroy others. And all the willpower was no good to them. Eh? So you see that is willpower, but intention means using the quality that volition can uh, enable you to do things. That's very important, that's a very good, per look, by the way, look at how much he has improved by now. Look. So, that's it. Now would you please lie and cry again. Cry, you see in English the word cry means screw up your willpower, but then don't try, just do it, slowly. That's improving greatly. Can you see the great majority does it better than before? Now, let, let's do what we'll do. Perhaps another differentiation will make it even easier. And then we'll go back to the older ones and you'll see how easy that is. Now, would you please stand again near the wall? And now stand on it on the inside, on the inner border, inner border of the foot, and to the middle, inner border, several times, inner border. That's much more difficult, actually. Look how much less movement there is standing on the inner border. Stand on the inner border several times. Move that right foot a little bit more to the right, away from the left, and it will be easier to lift the inner border. Inner border. Can you feel that it's easier? Inner border. That's it. Now do that about a dozen movements, but not powerfully. Each time, easier, lighter. As if you were always doing that. Easy. And the last three movements make them one after that like that, pam, 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 just easy. That's it. That's, that's, that's. 
quite easy, simple. We now lie at the floor. And try to do it. Bend your knee, of course, your right knee, and stand on the inner border. Don't move the foot outwards, it's on the inner border only. Slowly stand on the inner border. If you want, stand on the outer border, you know that. Now look, the foot goes back to the middle. Therefore, it has nothing to do outside. And the, now on the inner border, you're moving outside instead of moving the, on the inner border. Can you see if you stand on the right, on the outer border, on the inner border, with some people they move the foot outwards in, instead of standing on the inner border. Now watch, when they do that, stand on the outer border now. Now you see the foot turns back to the middle. So obviously you did something else than stand on the inner border. Now watch, watch, sit again and look, because these are things, you stay, you stay, we are, that's how we are built, we have a nervous system which has been taught to do certain things and certain were neglected, and those neglected give us trouble all our life, because they are part of us and they want to live and participate, and they can't. Therefore, there is an addition in the brain, there are all conflicts, difficulties, and those parts suffer actually physical injury and trouble. And therefore, look now, what, what we said. Stand on the outside border. Look, she takes the foot inward, which is correct. Now, stand on the outside, in the inside border. Look, she moves outward. Now, stand on the inside border. Look, she takes the foot back to the middle. Therefore, she was not aware that she's taking the book outside. She substitutes for the movement, for standing on the inner border, a movement outwards, and she confounds those two. It is if somebody asks him to say yes, and you know what he says? You know, yeah, well, no. Instead of yes, say something else. Somebody who wants to understand that this is yes, will say, well, he has a spare hand. But he, he, he doesn't say yes. He says something else. Now slowly. And of course if you have to do it on the stage, or you have to speak clearly, articulate, then I'll say, ah, 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 it means nothing. Try again. Do you see? Take stand on the outside border. Can you feel that when you do outside border, you turn the big toe in the direction of your spine? Now, and when you say the inner border, you move it outside, outside more more do it intentionally that's real really. now look the toe the foot is now at 45 degrees to your spine all right now outside border that's it really, take it back now move the uh, stand on the inside border without turning your foot outwards slowly that's no no can you see she does what he does it begins to wobble pom pom that is a function coming through because the brain has never made the path for the nerves and there's no control over the legs. And no willpower can do that. The more willpower she will apply, the more the leg will do what it wants. And therefore I say, unless you know what you're doing, you can't do what you want. Now, if she knows that she takes it outwards, take it outwards when you want to stand on the inner side. Well now, do it again. Can you see? You're doing something you don't want to do. Now, that, that's it. That's the first light. And that's very good for a first trial. Now, slowly. Don't turn outwards. You don't have to turn outwards. Don't do what you want to do, but don't turn outwards. Inwards again. You see, that's your brain. You, you have turned outwards. A little bit, but you have. Now, don't. That, that's better. Don't do any more. Outwards. On the outer border on the outer border, stand on the outer border. 
Now, and in this position, stand on the inner border. Tell me how badly it's done. That's good. But don't substitute another thing for it. Don't substitute another moment for the one you want to do. Then you have a chance in three trials, five trials, you'll get it. But if you substitute something else and you're satisfied, then what chance have you got in succeeding? None whatsoever. And therefore you can train a lifetime and not succeed. All right? Slowly. And on the inside, on the outside border, and then in this position, in this direction of the foot and the heel, stand on the inside. Doesn't matter how badly, how little, but at least you do what you want. That's right, good. Now that you have seen the difficulties that are ah, human, try yourself and give yourself the same latitude. Don't ask yourself to do it better. Then you will get it slowly. Now, check everyone for himself. You think of standing on the outside border, then you will find that the foot will direct itself more in the axis of the spine, that means more as it is, without any distortion. And then, after that, make the smallest moment standing on the inside border, and don't substitute another movement for it. And allow yourself not to do it big and not nicely and not correctly. Then you will be able to learn to do it. It will take a tenth of the time. Now, stop it, you've done very nicely. Now, put your right hand as if for pushing up, and also the left, bring it near if necessary. And now, turn your head to look at your foot, the right foot, look at it, that's right. Help yourself with the hand, but in a way which is comfortable. It means one lower, one shoulder lower. You can do any position you like, provided you can look. And now let's see what we have done. Look at it and see. Move your heel, your heel up and down, and see what the what the foot does. Can you feel? That's easy to see. When the foot is up, the heel is down. When the heel is down. The foot is up, which is the same thing, and the other way up. All right, you can do it. That's easy. Now, m move the heel only. Move the heel up and down, and see, feel the difference that it does. Now, move the foot only, and then you will see suddenly it will dawn on you. There is movement between the heel and the foot. That they can move one without the other. As it is, nobody can do it yet. But it, if you want to come near, and I will show you, you come near, please, come here. Turn your foot to myself and look. Look, all of you, have a look, look, look. I say that the heel and the foot can move relative to that. And with some, we can look, look, look. Look, and give me the other foot, so you can see the inside too, look, that's it, that's look. Can you see, the heel can move inwardly, and, our, and in fact it can move, if you have a look at the skeleton, somebody bring the skeleton here please, it's on wheels, you can bring it here. Yeah, bring it up here and then you will see. Now, look, if you take that heel, first of all you can see what happens. The heel is not in the middle. Look, it's not in the middle of the foot. It, the, the heel is outside. 
Now you see the artic look, there is a bones and articulations here that should be able to move and that should be able to move. Look. But uh, uh, in, in our hand we have no trouble of making those movements because we use them. But the feet we don't use them. We don't bother about them. And, but they are, therefore, not only that we, we don't do, our feet are not as good as service as the hands, but they, in fact, they distort posture to most people. Because the, the brain there tries to make it work properly, and everybody has his own idea of what he should do with the foot, with the shoe, and that, and interferes with it. So he, the pelvis, the knee, the, 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 the hip joint, or the spine, have to adjust themselves to a cockered way of using the foot, not the way it's made to be used. Therefore, obviously, there, there must be some trouble. See that? Now, what you have learned to do now is that in the long run, you would be able to do this. Look, boom, boom. Move the heel along, or the and you can be sure that anybody who can jump seven feet, seven inches, can't afford not to use his foot as a foot. You see? Of course you can. If I show you how much movement there is, come again, you will see. I will show you if you want. I did do only the movement which we show. But look, look. How much movement there is one without the other? But you can't use it. Because you have never done so. You have never thought of doing that. And therefore, when you want to look, you, the, when you open the door, the small toe opens, the other toes do what they like. Yeah? Can you see the heel can go that way? And then look. And if I work on it a quarter of an hour with the other parts, you would see how, look, that, look, that's painful. That's painful. No? Then I will see that one. That's painful. That is painful whether you say so or no. <laughs> no? Huh? All right, then I'll show you when it there. Stand on, stand on, lie on your stomach. Bend your foot like this, this toes. You see? Now, can you feel, can you tell me that that is not painful? Yes, yeah, thank you. Not, uh, now, that's the same thing, tendon. Now, you turn the other way and then people will see that you don't have to be a genius to find out that it's painful. <laughs> lie on your foot. Lie on your front like you did just a minute ago. On your stomach. No, but the feet, so. Now put the foot on the floor like you did with me. No, no, you see, this is very difficult. Now, can you see why I said it's difficult? Look, that tendon sticks out a mile. Look, there, there. Yeah. It must be difficult. Does it you can imagine that if I open the hand and the tendon suddenly close the hand like that. Obviously, you normally don't use it like that, that's why it's not painful. But if with that leg, if you gave that leg to the person who jumps seven foot, in seven inches with that foot, if he did it instead of his, that tendon would snap. All right? All right, now we, I say that your foot is as good as his, provided you get aware of it and do what your foot can do. And it can do much more, much better than the use you make of it. All right. Now, would you please? Oh. Good, thank you. So, would you please look at, lie in your stomach, look at the foot again. Look at it, and bend your right foot, and look at it, and do all the movements that we have done. Move the heel inward and outward, inward and outward, the heel, 
and you will see that suddenly you feel that you can move the heel outward the heel outward and you can move the foot inward when you do that now it's very almost hard to believe look I want to show you so that you realize look look how much look how much a, a heel can go outward inward outward from the middle as much outward as inward now look at most heels what do they do look outward not a, not a single tenth of an inch only inward outward nothing from the middle outward look substitute something else for it even when you look at it can you see that foot of course is a trained foot if it weren't trained he wouldn't be able to do it and we'll add that six again look can you see how much movement there is in the heel outward look look at yours and see how much you do from the middle point outward All right, now move the, the, the toes inward and outward. Inward, and, and do, uh, do you flex or do you other things? Don't substitute anything, move right and left. Inward and outward. Now, see whether you can realize that when the foot is inward, the heel is outward, and when the foot is outward, the heel is inward. But don't tilt it. Don't stand on the outside ridge, on the outside of the foot. Now, now, think of standing on the outer edge of the foot. The outer edge. Right? Now, look at it and now stand on the inner edge. Can you do the movement? When you look at it, it's easier, but not much. <laughs> eh? Slowly. That's right. Now on the inner, stand, uh, that's right. On the outer, and, uh, but don't substitute another moment, stand on the inner. You will see that even those attempts to do it, it's so useful, it so restores the, the brain and the body to be better, that when you get up and try to walk, you will see that this foot is your foot, the other one is a, a poor parent a poor relative. Is it? Would you please stand up, walk around and see for yourself. And watching you will see the face on the side of that foot and the eye on that side and the shoulder. Walk and see which is the foot you prefer. And which is the one you're using now. Can you see one is a clever foot and the other one is a silly one. One is you, and the other one is your poor parent, whom you don't want to give a night in your house. Look, watch, feel how you you use that foot on the floor, and how you the other one steps on the floor. 